Hey, I'm Greg. This is Jared and Jacob, and we're the guys behind Wisecrack, where we make comedy and educational videos. We're so excited to teach you guys how to make awesome YouTube videos using a limited budget, or what we call broke-ass budget. <laughs> That's right, you don't need a lot of money to make great content for YouTube. I mean, we had no money and we made really fun shows. Uh, we created our first two shows for less than 500 bucks a piece, so we highly suggest you just think uh, with a resourceful mindset. As long as you're resourceful with what you do have, you can still create great shows for YouTube. You gotta start first with your idea. It's all about the substance of what you create. The most successful videos on YouTube that are cheap, start with what you do have. So if you're creating a music video and you need a set on a rooftop, find out which one of your friends live downtown. Reach out to their friends of friends, Facebook friends. You'd be amazed at the kind of resources people volunteer when they know you're making something on YouTube. It's about making videos that are so irresistible that they must be shared, and those don't always require a big budget. Hey guys, my name is Jared. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about creating ideas that are going to work within a low budget scenario on YouTube. First, don't get stuck in the mindset that if you don't have a lot of money, you can't make great videos, because it's just not true, especially with YouTube. Making cheap videos is what YouTube is all about. YouTube isn't TV, it's not film. It doesn't need to be look fully polished to be successful. Even if your production looks homemade, your audience will love you more for it because it's real. They can see you in it. Use those limitations to your advantage. If you don't have an idea of what to make yet, look around you. Think of what you have. Maybe it's locations, access to actors, certain props, costumes, collections, whatever. Or maybe it's something that you know a lot about. That's a good starting point. Think about how you can create something compelling using those limitations. Uh, let's say, for example, you only have access to your bedroom or apartment. What kind of shows or videos can you create that uses the bedroom or the apartment as a setting? Or maybe you've been given permission to film in a school. Then create a show about being at school after hours. Whatever resources and knowledge that you have at your disposal is a great place to start. So, for example, for Thug Notes, I had access to one of my best friends, Joe, who just so happens to be a literary genius. So using that, I knew I could count on him to help me create a show about great works of literature. For Google Please, my writing partner Jacob and I knew a ton about Jewish culture and Yiddish language, so we used that as our starting point. Once you know what you want to go make, limited resources shouldn't scare you off. There are some scenarios that don't even require a ton of money. If you're doing a reality TV type shoot, then you can get away with handheld shots or shooting without light rentals. You're not creating works for a large cinematic screen where every detail will be scrutinized. You're shooting for a smaller screen, so you can definitely get away with a lot. A smart thing to do is create a format that you can film multiple episodes in one day. So for example, with Thug Notes, we're able to shoot all the episodes in one location. It's just Sparky Sweets in front of his library. Another thing is you're gonna to wanna to create a format that can be repeatable. Something that you're not gonna to have to think about if I'm ever gonna run out of episode ideas. So for example, with book reviews, we're never gonna run out of books to do because there are just so many classics, people have been writing books for thousands of years. So another thing about Thug Notes that makes it very easy is that it's literally just a two camera setup. We have a close up and we have a wide shot. All the real labor goes into the writing. But when it comes to the production day, which is always the most expensive day, we're really just cranking them out. If you get on set, something's always gonna go wrong. Set life, creating something, especially in video, is one of the most chaotic things you can do. You have to come in with a very flexible mentality. You have to say that if something goes wrong, try and use that to my advantage. So once you got your script, you're ready to move on to the next step, production. Hey, I'm Jacob. All right, so you have a script and you know what you want to make. Well, welcome to production, one of the most exciting steps in the whole process of making great videos for YouTube. Locations are always the first thing I think about, since without them, you can't really get your job done. For our first show, I needed a really beautiful home and kitchen, so I called my landlord. I asked her if I could use her place, and I, I guess I felt a little guilty, but not really. I said, hey, Carol, good to hear from you. I hope you've been well. Uh, can we use your kitchen for a shoot? And I thought she would definitely say, you know, no, it's too invasive. And she was like, yeah, I don't care. if I Come on by. You know, it's fine. It didn't cost a penny. And she was so happy how the first episode turned out that she let us use her house over and over again for the show. A friend of the family generously let us use their beautiful home library for Thug Notes. Without them, our show would never have been possible. And I didn't have a budget, but I knew I needed something spectacular to showcase the show. And I found it. We later used our accountant's office, anywhere we could get access to. If you look hard enough, you'll find something. So once you have your location, it's time to start thinking about props and wardrobe. Again, cheap, cheap, cheap. 
For Bubble of Please, I borrowed most of the props from my family. For Thug Notes, we borrowed a lamp from a friend, we got a cheap chair here, we got some free books there. Before buying anything, be sure to check out free Craigslist or other online classified listings in your area. And hit up Goodwill, The Salvation Army, and other local thrift shops. So here's a Halloween head that we got for a buck. and We've used it in our Halloween productions year after year. Props clothes, locations, you name it, it never hurts to ask. If you don't have money to offer people in exchange for what you're requesting of them, offer to buy them a coffee or a meal. It may not change their lives, but people really do appreciate a token of gratitude. And if you can offer them your company, you'll be surprised how that can be more meaningful than payment. On the day, it's finally here. Let's consider lighting. Maybe your shots don't even require them. If that's the case, maybe you're shooting outside, great. You're good to go. But if you do, then maybe get some cheap lights at Home Depot or a China ball from Ikea. As long as someone in your crew has experience with basic lighting, you'll probably get away with a lot on a tiny budget. Just let them know what you're going for. If you need a tracking shot, but maybe you can't afford a dolly, we'll put the camera on a skateboard, on a rolling chair, on a wheelchair. That's what we did, and it looked just great. Being resourceful is incredibly important when you don't have a lot of money, but don't let that scare you off because you can make really great content without you know, really spending a lot of money. Hey, I'm Greg. I play Sparky Sweets on Thug Notes, and I'm going to talk to you about performing under limitations. Being in front of the camera on a YouTube show is a blast. It's about building a direct relationship with the viewer, my fans. There is no shortage of aspiring actors, and every major city has a resource that you can reach out to actors. Just Google it. You can also find actors through your local little theater, or actor troupe, or online actor databases. And if you need a comedian, consider checking out the local comedy scene. I'm a stand-up comedian, that's how Jared and Jacob found me. We had a mutual friend and they put us in touch. You can hold auditions almost anywhere, but see if you can get access to a free room that's a bit more professional than your apartment. You don't want a lot of completely random strangers coming over your place. You can always screen candidates by having them send you a video submission for their initial audition. Just provide them with the script and you can host your auditions over Skype or Google Hangouts. A lot of actors want something for their reel, so oftentimes they will act for free just so they can have something to show for themselves, to attract better roles, get agents, managers. One thing I suggest is you ask your actors to do is to bring their own clothes to set. It can save you a lot of time and money, since your actors probably already have a lot of the basics themselves. If you need a special outfit or accessory, hit up the Goodwill, the Salvation Army, or any charity shop. A really important tip that saves a ton of time on set, which in turn saves you money, is being prepared. Send your actor their scripts as far in advance as possible. Have your actors rehearse their lines, and if you have a ton of material to cover, consider a cheap teleprompter. You can find one that works with an iPad for about 100 bucks on eBay. And if you're starring in the video yourself, have a friend direct you. It's hard to be in front of the camera and also have the ability to judge your performance. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. It's awesome getting this information out. And if you want to learn more about upping your production skills, check out Creator Academy, the annotation right here. And if you want to learn more about Thug Notes, boom, check it out right here. Thanks for watching. Get out there, work on some stuff, create.